All right. Now we are going to have our opening keynote. This one is going to be an in conversation with Yoko Shimomura. She is one of the most recognized games in video game uh, names in video game history. Her compositions are iconic. They are everywhere. I'm going to welcome her to stage right now. And I am talking to see which microphone I'm using. OK, we are moving to this one. Nodding? Yes, cool. Wonderful. Uh, Yoko has, uh, this is Alex as well, who will be helping translate. Um, and Yoko has a little bit of a Who Am I presentation for us. So we'll play that now. All right, hope. Is this working? Okay, great. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm Alex, so I work with Yoko Shimomura at our um, game music label, Brave Wave Productions. And this is actually my second time at High Score. The previous, or the first time, was back in 2019. So it's uh, great to be back. Um, we actually wanted to come last year, but she was literally on the other side of the world in the UK when last year's event was taking place. So it didn't work out last year, but we were very happy that um, High Score followed up with us, and uh, we're, we're very happy to be here. So thank you again for your time, and we hope you enjoy the presentation. Um, it will be uh, largely QA focused, so um, we welcome questions from the audience uh, about her and her work and her thoughts on music, gaming, and pretty much anything. Uh, as long as like we can talk about it, we'll be very happy to uh, answer, okay? Hi everyone. <laughs> sorry, I, 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 I'm going to speak Japanese today. I'm sorry. Nihongo de Hanashimas. Shimura Yoko des. Mo. え、皆さん、今日とても若い方が多いんですけれども、もう私はえ、ゲーム音楽を作って、え、30年以上になります。Hello everyone. Um I'm sorry I'm going to have to speak Japanese today, but um I am thrilled to see so many young people here in the audience. Um as all of you probably know, like I have over 30 years uh in my career as a video game music composer. Alex, can you see if the laptop feed can come through? There we go. Thank you. <笑><笑>はい、え、私の簡単な、え、ま、あの、今紹介が書かれてるんですけれども、え、もともとはピアノ が好きでクラシックのピアノを勉強して学生の時は、え、そこからま、とてもゲームが大好きだったので趣味で、え、ま、え、昔のファミコンと、え、日本では呼んでるんですけれども、え、ゲーム機のスーパーマリオブラザー
So the first game company that I ever worked for was Capcom. And at the time I joined, like computers were still not commonplace. Like I had not experienced using one before I joined Capcom. And so even, even the idea of making music using a computer was、uh, a very new thing to me when I first joined the company. それで私はもともとピアノで先ほどお話したんですけどピアノでクラシックの音楽をまあ勉強してたんですけれどもまあなぜか入ったのがアクションのカプコンの会社に入ってしまったので本当に曲を作るのも難しくていろいろ苦労しながら苦労したというかまあ悩みながらあのー。もうもしかしたらこの仕事続けられないかもなとか思いながらやっぱりその仕事がすごくこうまあやりがいもあって楽しかったのでそのまま,まなんか続けてえスクエアまあ今のスクエアエニックスですけれどもまあスクエアに入ってそこを退職してからも今もえフリーランスとしてえーゲーム音楽に関わらせていただいています。So, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, I studied classic piano、um, when becoming a musician. So, it, it did seem a little bit unusual that I ended up joining Capcom, a company known for its action games. And to be honest, when I was at Capcom, I did have a hard time adjusting into the role of game music composer.、Um, I had doubts whether、um, I could really like, continue to you know, do this kind of work or stay in this field. But I did find the idea of being a music composer for video games to be very rewarding, and so I stuck to it. And eventually, I joined Square, which is now Square Enix, of course. And so, yeah,、uh, I worked at Square for a while, and then even after I left Square,、um, I've continued to work with them as a freelance composer, and I've、uh, continued to do game music composition even today. こんな感じで大丈夫ですかもっとなんか話す？いや大丈夫です。<笑> Is that enough for a simple introduction for now? Or... <笑> Thank you. ありがとうございます。Thank you so much. Well, one of the best ways to get to know you and your music better is by hearing some of it. So we're going to play a track that you might have heard of, possibly, maybe.、Uh, this is Dearly Beloved from Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs>
and uh, and I'm seeing a lot of people closing their eyes in the room and just enjoying it, which I think is just the best. Thank you so much. Hello. Thank you so much. なんかね、こうあのこう皆さんと一緒にこういうふうに曲を聴けるっていうのはすごく光栄なことなんですけれどもそれと同時に何でしょうねなんかすごく恥ずかしい気持ちになります。<笑> so it is an honor to be sitting here together with all of you and, and having an opportunity to just listen to this song. Um, here today, but I, I do also feel a little embarrassed about it, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Why? It feels like a song I wrote when I was a kid, and then now, it, now it's being shown to me again after such a long time, and that's, that's my reaction. I wish I'd done anything as a kid that was half as good. <laughs> so, that's what I'm saying. You're right. I mean, it, it, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy that we, I'm having this opportunity to listen to this song, but I still just can't help but be a little bit embarrassed at the same time or shy. When was the last time you listened to that piece? Ah, but it's a lot of, um, what do you mean? This song has a series of versions, so I listened to this song for a little while, but it's a little bit of a surprise. But it's a lot of different things that are recently, So, this dearly beloved, this song, there are multiple renditions of it depending on the game、uh, that it's be, it appears in. So, this specific version of Dearly Beloved, this specific arrangement,、uh, I have actually not listened to it recently, so it, it has been a while. but The song or the melody itself,、um, I, I've you know, had plenty of、uh, opportunities to hear it, even、uh, very recently, just because、um, I'm constantly you know, helping make new versions for it, for new games as they come out. And, almost all of the, well, it's a very old time, but it's not in the Square and the other songs, it's all on the iPhone. iPhone. <laughs> so, I'm not sure about my work、uh, for, my Cap for my days at Capcom, but everything that I've done at Square is actually now、um, on like digital platforms, so you can, or you can easily listen to it on your smartphone. It's <laughs> demo. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, so, talking about a piece that was made many, many years ago, we have a question from Mina. It says, What still excites you about creating game music after 30 plus years? What is it? What is it? What is it? なんですかねやっぱりこう求められてこういうそのこのゲームにあのこう下村陽子が書いたこういう曲が欲しいんだっていう求められることに対してえ返してその反応をやっぱりこうまずはその作っている現場の反応それからそのゲームが世に出た時のやっぱり遊んでくださる皆さんのその反応っていうのがやっぱりすごくこう何て言うんですかね、まあ、キャッチボールとか、まあ、テニスの打ち合いみたいな感じでこうそのすごくこうやり取りしてる感じがものすごく私にとってはやっぱり楽しくてやりがいがある仕事だなってあるのとまあ続けても大丈夫、うん
、であとまあ同じ仕事を続けてるんですけど、まあ、やってることは常に割と新鮮なのでいつもこう新しいタイトルが始まったり新しい曲を書くたびに新鮮な気持ちにはなってるので、まあ、それがやっぱりこう長く面白く続けられるところかなと思ってます。So that's a great question. Why、uh, do I continue to enjoy what I do? And basically, I, I make music because people ask me to. When people approach me, <laughs> they say, hey, we want, we want Yoko Shimomura to make this kind of music. And for me,、um, I enjoy that very much. I enjoy the、uh, process of、um, speaking with the developers when a new game is greenlit. And getting their feedback and having conversations with them about you know, the type of music that they're looking for. And I'm always excited to see how they're going to react to something that I compose. And then after that, the game comes out. And then I get to see the audience's、um, feedback as well. So I think, in that sense, it's a very、uh, enjoyable kind of profession to be in. I think there's a lot of merit to doing it even today. And to that point,、um, Even though my job has been the same since day one, game music composition, I do feel that the things that I'm always doing,、um, because there are so many different games、uh, out there that get announced and I'm working on a lot of different projects, I do think that what I'm doing on the day to day still feels very fresh. And I continue to do it, and I, and I want to continue doing that and enjoying that. So that's why I enjoy,、uh, even after all this time. Being a game music composer. I love that you say, I do it because people ask me to. <laughs> Isn't that just the best thing, best reason to do it? <laughs> to be wanted. <laughs> I mean, yeah, what's going to happen when people stop asking for my music? <laughs> I don't think they will stop asking. <laughs> I'll do my best to make sure that day never comes. <laughs> well, you have such variety and range in the type of music that you've made and that you can make really, really well.、Uh, a question from Sebastian is How does your approach to writing music differ when you're writing a character driven piece versus a theme driven piece versus a setting driven piece? So, this is the s a m e So, のその資料しかないのでものすごくやっぱり資料が少なくてその中からこう例えばそのキャラクターだったらどういう生、まあ、い立ちでどういうことを考えてるんだろうとかどういう信念を持ってこのゲームの中で生きてるんだろうかとかそういうのが、まあ、読み取れるものもあればこう全然想像がこうもう想像がっていうかこの。もらった資料だけでは分からないところがあるのでそのな分からない部分を自分の想像でキャラクターだったらそういう設定とかを自分の想像で考えたりその、えー、例えば街の曲だったらその見えてる街の一部分だけではなくてさらにその先にはどういう世界があってどういう広がりがあるんだろうっていうのもとにかくいろんなことを想像します。So... 
I would say that my composition process doesn't necessarily change just because a track is character driven, story driven, or like scenic, scene driven. Um, the thing about game music composition is that I enter the process when things are still a work in progress and I don't have all the information I need to completely understand how like something how a character is going to be designed or how the story is going to um, evolve so based on the limited information I have during development a lot of any kind of track that I make comes down to my ability to just sort of imagine how it's going to turn out right so I have to you know, look at this information that I have about the game that's in development and then I have to think very closely okay what's gonna happen here and and if this happens what kind of track should I make and it, it I have to use my imagination um, a lot of the time and so that that I would say is what dictates um, my my general game music composition process あまり自分自身は意識してない。対象が違うだけで、まあやり方は同じ。So, so yeah, um, I, yeah, so as I mentioned at the beginning, I don't really think that my, my thought process even like changes depending on what kind of track. Obviously, I do have to approach each track, you know, type、um, accordingly. But yeah, I don't, I don't feel the sense that it's different. Well, we'd love to hear some more of your music and hear some more of the range that you have. So we're now going to play Guile's theme from Street Fighter 2. Romance music or something more like fight music? I mean, they're both so fun to make, it, and they're also both very hard to make at the same time. <laughs> Do you find one harder? もっとしんどいのかなんかあんまりそのこの曲調でどっちがっていうのってそのはっきりとしてなくてやっぱりその時の気分だったり<笑>うんまあいつどんな曲ができるのか自分自身もあんまりわからないのであの自分が例えば「そのディアリー・ビー・ラブド」みたいな曲を作るようなこうなんていうんですかねこうモードに入ってるのにガイルみたいな曲を作らなきゃいけないっていう時とかはも,うものすごくしんどいですし逆もやっぱりそうなのでやっぱりその時その時によって違いますね。Yeah, I don't really know how to answer like which is harder to make. I think it really comes down 
figuratively speaking, to like the weather that day, maybe, or just what 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 kind of mood I'm in. Um, and and it, it is really hard to predict how a song is going to turn out before I make it. Um, and yeah, like I guess you could say I might have a mode that I'll go into when I'm making music, but there are also times when like I'm in the mood to make another dearly beloved esque, you know, melodic track, but then what the client needs is another guile track, right? So <laughs> it's really hard to say um, which one is easier, which one is harder. Well, I have a very apt question from Slido from Artemis. How do you balance your own preferences and personal style with the preferences and desired style of the client?うん、ま、やっぱりこの私の仕事のやり方としてはやっぱりその求められているところを満たす、求められているところをさらにま、超えられればいいなって思っているので、まずはやっぱりそのどういうものが求められているのかっていうのをま、そこは冷静になって、そ
、まあ、ちょっと私海外で皆さんあのどのような形でそのゲーム音楽家の人たちがどのような形皆さんフリーランスなのかそれとも会社員という形があるのかちょっとその辺を私あまり詳しくないんですけれども、まあ、日本はいくつかの会社がやっぱりその自社コンポーザーっていうのを持っていてあの、まあ、そこにやっぱりこう入る、まあ、結構やっぱり今はすごくなかなか入るのが難しいんですけれども、まあ、やっぱりそこに入ると確実にその仕事で、まあ、やっぱりあのフリーランスと違ってお給料としてそのお金の心配もせずに、まあ、働けるっていうのでやっぱりあの会社,そのまあ会社所,属所属の。えー、作曲家になりたいっていう人はやっぱり日本ではまだ結構いますねただあのー、やっぱりそのその会社のゲームしか作れないので基本的にやっぱりもっともっと自由にいろんなゲームを作りたいなっていうのであればあのー、フリーランスでやっぱりやっていくって人もとても多いのでまずはその皆さんがそのどちらもし本当に日本に来てゲーム音楽を作りたいなって思われる方がいたらまずそれをどちらにするかっていうのはそれは本当にその人それぞれなのでまずそれをしっかり決めてから、えー、日本に移住されたらいいかなと思います。So I know how a lot of things with game music composition work in Japan. I'm not 100%, I'm not overly familiar with how things work outside of Japan.、Um, but basically, in Japan, there are two different types of, like, I guess, work styles or employment styles that、um, the average gay music composer、uh, is hired as. So the first one is in house composing. So it would be joining a company and becoming an in house composer. And you get a salary for doing that.、Um, and then the other most common way is actually being a freelance composer, where you don't work for one company, but you can you know, do your own thing and you know, work, for,、uh, work for multiple companies. And the, the nice benefit of being a freelance composer is that the type of you know, music you can make is going, in, in general, going to be a lot more broad.、Um, if you're an in house composer, you have to make music. In that company's style under their guidelines. So it could be a little more、um, rigid in that regard. And so, with that, like if someone were to move to Japan specifically to become a gay music composer,、um, it's definitely something you have to think about. Do you want to do like in house composing or do you want to become a freelance composer? And that's、uh, a decision that I, I recommend people think about very carefully. Um, because there are, there are definitely merits to both ways.、Um, if you're in house, you don't have to worry about money. You're just going to get a salary every month. If you're a freelance composer, obviously you have more breath, but you have to look for that work as well. Having experienced both sides, both being in house and being freelance, do you have a preference for one? Do you have something that you really recommend people kind of try to work towards? そうですねあのやっぱりこう<咳>ごめんなさい、えー、と会社員だった時はあのこうフリーランスでこう自由にやっぱり仕事ができるのってすごくやっぱり憧れてすごくいいなと思ってたんですけどいざフリーランスになってやってみると、まあ、どれだけその、まあ、会社というものに助けてもらってたか。あの守られてたかっていうのはやっぱりすごく思い知ったのであのな,なんて言うんですかねこう本当にこれはどちらがもうどちらがいいとかってやっぱりすごく言えなくてあのうん本当にまあ一長一短というかどっちが自分例えばその。事務作業っていうんですかねその自分でやるといろいろ例えばその曲を書いてそれの交渉も例えばそのギャランティーをいくらにするかっていう交渉とかその
書いた報酬をもらうのにもいちいちなんかこう結構その事務的な作業があるのでそういうのを私はすごく苦手なのであの会社にいる時はそういうのをほぼほぼしなくてよかったんですよね。あのなのでそういう意味ではすごくこう仕事の仕事というか曲を書くことにすごく集中できる環境まあ、私の場合はその会社員の時はすごく仕事に集中できる環境だったと思うのでまあそういうところがやっぱり会社員としても魅力の一つかなとは思いますただまあじゃあ今も会社に戻りますかって言われるとまあやっぱり会社には戻らないかなと思うので今の私にはこの今のフリーランスが向いてると思いますだから本当に皆さんそれぞれだと思うのであのまあいろいろこう今聞いた話とかえと調べられて自分にはどっちが向いてるかなっていうのはやっぱりご自身で判断されるのがいいかなと思います。私からこっちがおすすめっていうのはなかなかちょっと難しいかなと思います。So yeah, as as Rad mentioned, I、um, have experienced both being an in-house composer and being a freelance composer and I became a freelance composer because when I was an in-house composer I had this dream of making my own music and doing whatever I wanted. So that's why I ended up transitioning into the role I'm in today. But after I became a freelance composer, that's when I started to realize and understand more clearly just how much the companies that I worked for、um, took care of me when I belonged to them in house.、Um, that became more evident.、Uh, And you know, I, I, I learned just, just what companies do to protect their own employees. And when you're a freelance composer, that is no longer really something that they can do for you in the same way.、Um, when you become a freelance composer, yes, you do gain a lot of flexibility in how you approach、um, the work that you do. But at the same time, because now, you, you don't just do game music composition anymore as a freelancer. You have to. Negotiate your own pay and the rights to the music that you're going to make. And I personally have never really enjoyed、uh, doing all that very much. Like, I hate negotiating, I hate talking about money with companies, but I have to do that in addition to the actual composition job itself.、Um, and so, you know, it, it made me realize when I was an in house composer, I could just focus on making music. I didn't have to worry about any of this negotiation or Or rights management, or any of that、uh, sort of thing.、Um, I do get asked every now and then, you know, do you want to come back <laughs> and start working at a company again? And, you know, in, in, in spite of the, you know, the changes and the responsibilities that come with being a freelance composer,、um, actually, I, I still prefer to be freelance, to be honest.、Um, that's pretty, that's what I enjoy the most. That being said, to anyone else who, is,、um, who has to make this kind of decision,、um, it's a highly personal decision and it, it does come down to everybody's own individual circumstances.、Um, it's one that I encourage people to think about very carefully, but it's not really like, you know, should you become an in house or should you become a freelancer? It's not really something that I can just answer for anybody. Uh, but I do, I do think it's something worth thinking about. And that's a great opportunity for me to remind you that there are sessions with Arts Law and the Australian Guild of Screen Composers that will be happening if you want to book in a session. Great people to talk to about some of those things. And also, 11 a.m. tomorrow in this room, there will be a session run about games royalties. You know, just some fun things over the weekend that you might want to. <laughs> All right. What is the biggest difference between composing now and when you started? あの作曲ということに関しては意外と根本的なことはまああまり変わってなくてそこの姿勢っていうのはもう本当に。始めた時から今までもあまり変わってないんですけれども、まあ、皆さんご存知のように、えー、まずそのファミコンから今の、えー、最新の PS5 とかゲーム機に至って全部その仕様がどんどんどんどん良くなってるのであの
そういう意味ではその仕事の進め方っていうのはかなり変わってきていてもう昔は本当に私効果音からもうえとモスト2なんかだともうこうボイス収録とかも全部自分一人でやってたんですけれども今はもう。そのもう全てにスペシャリストがいて、えー、音楽だけでも例えばオーケストラをレコーディングするというとそのレコーディングを仕切るこうスタジオを押さえたりそういう事務周りをやってくれる人からアレンジャーから譜面を書く人、まあ、たくさんの人を本当に一曲を完成させるのに。昔は1人で全部やってたものが今は本当にたくさんの人が関わって完成することが多いですね。So believe it or not, the actual process of composing a song back then and composing one now, like the fundamentals haven't really changed all that much.、Um, sorry, that happens when my computer goes to sleep. <laughs>、um, the fundamentals haven't changed so much.、Um, However, back then, I think、um, because the scale was so much smaller, for example, on the NES,、um, I had to do pretty much every audio related、um, task for a given game,、um, especially at Capcom, for example. So for Street Fighter II, I had to make the background music, I had to make the sound effects, I even had to、um, come up with the voices of the characters. Um, and it was my responsibility to、uh, create and program all of that. Nowadays, however,、um, e- even within a single game or within a single track, there are lots of people involved in different parts of the process. It's not just the composition anymore.、Um, for example, like if, if I'm going to make a track that is orchestrated, Um, I will come up with the track, but there will be specialists for the recording sessions, for the orchestra conducting, and so on and so forth. So essentially, now, like even making just one track is a process that involves, a, you know, that could involve a large number of people. Whereas back in the day, I was on my own making all those tracks for Street Fighter and whatnot. You started as a piano major at the Osaka College of Music, which is a very traditional, very tactile way of creating music. How was it making the jump into a more synthesized, computer based way of making music, especially then also doing sound effects and things like that? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question?、Um, started playing piano, very tactile, very traditional. What was the jump like going into more computer based and I suppose synthesized ways of making music. I was a classic piano that I was using a synth and action song. I was using a synth and a t s I mean, I, I, I really had a lot of trouble. <laughs> Making it happen. もうドラムドラムとかあの、まあ、クラシックだったのであのいわゆるスネアドラムって、まマ,ーチマーチングとかでも使うのでスネ,スネアドラムだけは叩いたことがあったんですけどそもそもドラムセットとかをもうほぼほぼ間近で見たこともないしもうなんかなんで<笑>。入社できたのか本当にわからないぐらいもう悩んでてもう泣きながらこうまあ日本なのでこうまあ通勤電車にこうまあご存知の方もいらっしゃると思うんですけどまあラッシュすっごい人がいっぱい乗ってるんですねその会社行き帰りってでまあ行きはすごく憂鬱な気持ちで今日もまた曲できないわからないドラムを作るのかとか。もう全然理解できないベースとかのを使って曲を作らなきゃいけないのかとかもう息は悩みながらもう帰りはやっぱり今日もできなかったと思ってもう泣きながら帰るっていうぐらい本当にできない日々が続いてました。So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I started on classic piano, so、uh, the fact that I had to make music,、um, for example, like every, every track needs a drum, a drum stem. Like, I, I had like, dabbled in snare drums just a little bit, but like, I had never really like, seen like, an entire drum set、um, <laughs> before I ended up joining Capcom back in the day.、Um, but because I had to do everything, like, I had to figure out 
how all that worked. And in terms of how I felt, how that transition went for me, um, I, I, I would ride the train to work every morning, you know, before the day starts. And I remember thinking, just sitting on the train going, oh my God, here's another day where I have to, you know, <laughs> make me drum based, you know, s tracks that I have no idea. Like, I don't think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh my God, this, this, this is gonna be one heck of a day. And I would get to work, get through the day, and then, you know, I would ride the train back home. And I remember times when I just like, I just wanted to cry because, you know, the day didn't go very well. And yeah, that, it, w it was a rough transition for sure. And um, it was definitely a very tough one. Um, so yeah, it <laughs> I, I, I felt like I was a fish. What do you, how do you say that? A fish out of, out of, water. Out of water? Yeah. Uh, I appreciate hearing that even Yoko Shimomura has imposter syndrome sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> 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 My first year at Capcom, I, I can't count the number of times where I just had to ask myself, maybe I should get a new job. Um, even my parents back in the day, they, they, they were worried about me when I would tell them just how, how I felt like I couldn't do the job. And my parents said to me, if, if you don't like this job or you can't do it, just quit, right? And, and so I had that conversation with myself so many times that first year. <laughs> まあ、私き気持ちが結構負けず嫌いというか、なんかここで終わって溜まるかみたいなところがどこかにあって、そこからあのもうもうできないできないと落ち込んでてもまあ何も進歩がないので、もうとにかくものすごいその一二年はたく
Stefano asks, could you explain your workflow? Do you usually start on a piano with pen and paper, or do you compose in a door? Do you write an orchestral sketch first? Or do you compose in a, sorry? In a door, digital audio workstation. Oh, OK. まあ、あの私は、えー、と基本的にはピアノというか、まあ、鍵盤とあと、まあ、マッキントッシュの、えー、を使って作曲をしますねあのやっぱりピアノを勉強してたっていうのがあるので、まあ、まずは最初はこうピアノでこう触って。えー、いろいろこうどういうのがいいのかなみたいなのをこういろいろなんとなくその頭の中でぼやっとして広がってるイメージっていうのをこうピアノで弾きながらそこを探っていってまあそれをあのまあ私はあのデジタルパフォーマーっていうあのまあソフトを使ってるんですけれどもそれにこうまあメモをしていくっていう感じでそれがまあ大体その流れですね。So when I actually compose music, I do use a keyboard and a Mac、um, to create the songs. But in terms of actually coming up with the song itself and how it's going to sound,、um, so、yeah, since I,、um, you know, my, my origins are in classic piano, so what I'll do is I'll go to my piano, I'll you know, try, to, try to come up with a track, play it, and then、um, I'll try to write it down what, what I ended up creating. And then I'll go back to my keyboard and Mac and, and go from there. So that, that's how, yeah, when I'm playing the piano, that's when I'm looking for the melody or looking for the,、uh, the type of song that I want to make in my head. Aaron asks How do you find your approach to writing music changes when writing for linear versus nonlinear media? Can you elaborate on linear and nonlinear?、Uh, I guess like a piece that's going to play out in its entirety versus. Um, in a game where like movement and things like that might change how the piece plays. Is this correct? Is Aaron in the room? Am I ex- asking what you wanted to ask? Maybe、um, Aaron is referring to like tracks that a fixed track that just plays、mm, as it's、yeah. made versus a track that's more dynamic. Yes. In gameplay. I believe so. Aaron, are you here? Aaron is perhaps in live stream.、Um, um, I think that might be what I, th- I think so,、um, yeah. I archived it one sec.、Uh, yeah,、uh, difference in approach to writing. Well, for example, it's like the boss is changing, and 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 the boss is changing, a よくあるパターンっていうのは、まあ、あのこうよくいろいろよく切り替わる曲っていうのは、まあ、曲を2曲、まあ、テンポが同じ曲をで、まあ、バージョン違いみたいなのをこう2曲こう並行して走らせててそれをこう切り替えるなのでこういうのは割とスムーズに切り替えられるので、えー、と2曲、まあ、バージョン違いで2曲作るっていう作業で済むんですけれどもそうではなくても曲自体がこう、まあ、例えばボスが1第1形態第2形態第3形態で最後はまあ倒されて終わるみたいな曲を作ろうとするとそこをどう自然につなげるかっていうのはすごく考えなきゃいけないのとその第1形態っていうのが例えばこう人によってプレイ時間が違うので。
あのその曲がもうずっと単調だったらいいんですけどやっぱりそれも波を作らなきゃいけないそれからさらにそ,のそこまで不自然にならずに次をつないでまたそれも波を作らなきゃいけないっていうのでこれはもう本当にそうですねもうあの単純にじゃあ4形態あるから4曲分っていうよりももっともっとやっぱりあの考えなきゃいけないことも多いのでなかなか大変な作業ですね。So, I believe Aaron is referring to, for example, interactive、uh, music.、Um, I think the most common example I've seen is where, like, if you have a boss fight and the boss fight has multiple stages and then the boss fight ends, you have to, or I have to compose the music in accordance with each phase of that boss encounter, for example. So, yes, to answer the question, it is in inevitably more complicated to create an interactive track versus a like, so called fixed. Or a flat track where you just plays as I made it.、Um, even within the realm of interactive music, there are like two different, at least two different ways you can approach this. If it's the, just the same track, but I need two different versions of it based on like with a slightly different tempo,、um, then that's actually not so hard because I can make the same track and make, I could take the same track and make two variations, and then the programmer will make sure they both are playing. At the same time, and then the game will decide when to switch、uh, the track version that's being played. So that's actually not so hard. It is kind of like making two tracks, but at least I don't have to be the one to decide how it <laughs> actually runs in the game, right? However, if it's not that, and they need a track that's highly interactive and that changes according to, like, for example, going back to the boss fight, like the, 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 the stage of the fight, you know, form one, form two, form three. Um, and then, like, depending on the player, like, someone might be able to finish the first phase very quickly, but a less experienced player might take longer. And I have to keep all that in mind in, in such a scenario. Making multiple tracks like that can be, can be very challenging. And I do think that in, in, an, in an exceptionally complex scenario like the one I just described,、um, You know, it, it might be tantamount to like making four tracks, right, for one, for one specific scene. And, and that can definitely be、um, a very tough、uh, process to do. So, yeah, I, I would say that interactive tracks、um, do come with a certain level of complexity that、uh, fixed tracks don't necessarily have. Well, that ends、uh, this first session. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you so much. ありがとうございます。It is an absolute treat to get to hear from someone with your level of skill and experience, and we really appreciate it.